Welcome to The Manly Catholic. In this podcast, we will inspire, challenge, and equip all men to become the men they were created to be. Join us as we journey together to become the best versions of ourselves and strive to change our communities one man at a time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. All of us, all human beings, are created in the image and likeness of God. What does that mean? I think our readings are on full display of exactly what that means. Love. There's a manifold explanation of what it means to be created in the image and likeness of God, deep theological exhortations or philosophical exhortations. We can dive deep into that from the writings of the saints to be sure, but we are created for love, to give love, to receive love. That's what it most definitively means to say that we are created in the image and likeness of God. And that's what our readings are pointing towards today. I counted the word love in our first reading, second reading and in our gospel today. 20 times, did you catch that? The word love was used 20 times just in our second reading and just in our gospel today. It's clear as day that Jesus is trying to get our attention. Love, 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 love. How do we do that? Jesus asks us to love others the way that he loves us. We can't do that without Jesus. We can't love the way Jesus wants us to love without him. Bishop Olmsted's exhortation into the breach said that Jesus Christ is the epitome of what it means to be human. So if we're going to love the way Jesus modeled love, we have to look at the Greek. And so I grabbed my Greek New Testament and I flipped to these passages. And just about everywhere I saw the word love, in which we hear today from sacred scripture, I saw the word agape. We all know what that means. I've talked about agape before. It means sacrifice. Where do we see that epitome of love, of agape, here? Here. And so then I went back to the second reading in our gospel today, and wherever I found love, I substituted it with sacrifice. And it really opened up for me a deep meaning of what Jesus' love is. I encourage you to do that. Go through the second reading and go through the gospel, and wherever you find the word love, substitute that with sacrifice. Sacrifice has become one of my most favorite words because in the Latin, it means to make holy. To make holy. And that's what we're called to do. And so with the power of Jesus in and through us, we can love in the way that he wants us to love. Then we're going to fulfill that. And not only will we be fulfilled, but we will help fulfill the lives of others. And when we do that together... That's when we can enter into our marching orders in the end of the Gospel of Matthew, where Jesus tells us, go therefore to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them all I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you to the end of the age. Their sacrifice. Why? Because we're pouring ourselves out to other people. We're giving ourselves to other people. And in marriage, you can see that. This reciprocal covenant of love that is one of selflessness, one of sacrificing so that the other can be made holy. And in every single person we encounter, that's what we're supposed to do. Every single person you encounter, try and find Jesus in that person. In our readings today, Jesus also gives us the ability of what this looks like and how we can do that. And ever since Easter to Pentecost, we dive deep into Acts of the Apostles. And Acts of the Apostles, as I said before, is the unpacking of Holy Mother Church with all the sacraments. 
the fullness of the Holy Trinity has now been given to the people. Or now the people have access to the Holy Trinity. And we can see the apostles, our first bishops, going out and proclaiming Jesus Christ risen. Proclaiming that love. Even if it means to the death. They don't stop. Because they're baptized. Sacrificial love and the way that Jesus desires us to love is lived out in our baptism. And last weekend's homily, I said to all of you, including myself, I don't think we fully tap into our baptismal promises, the strength of our baptism. I think we've forgotten it. And if only we just prayed with that, if only we just entered in that classroom of silence with the Lord and put ourselves before him and said, Lord, help me to unpack the beautiful gift that you have given us. Do you understand how powerful and beautiful baptism is? It's the gift of all gifts. For without baptism, we do not have access to the rest of the sacraments. Think about that. Baptism opens the doors of Holy Mother Church and we enter, and then we're fed the graces of the sacraments. Again, that gives us strength to love in the way that Jesus wants us to love. And baptism unpacks that for us. And this is what the church has to say about baptism from the catechism. And this is only just a little piece. I encourage you to dive deep into the catechism on holy baptism. Because Jesus is asking us, requiring us, he's giving us marching orders to go out and to change the world, to bring others to the sacraments as well. Holy baptism is the basis of the whole Christian life, the gateway to life in the Spirit. And the door which gives access to the other sacraments. Through baptism, we are freed from sin and reborn as sons of God. We become members of Christ, are incorporated into the church, and made sharers in her mission. Baptism is the sacrament of regeneration through water and the word. Oh, what a gift. Baptism gives us a strength to love in a sacrificial way. And the saints understood this, didn't they? I went through some of, my, some of my most favorite saints, and I tried to find quotes by them kind of exemplifying the love because they encountered Jesus at some point in their life and gave their lives completely over to them. It was the love of Jesus that transformed them, and the only thing they could do, the only thing that was on their mind was to go out into the world and bring that love of Jesus to other people. And if these saints can do it, we can too. St. Clair of Assisi says this, we become what we love, and we love. She says, what we become what we love, and who we love shapes what we become. The great St. Augustine said this, you only love your friend truly when you love God in your friend, either because he is in him or in order that he may be in him. That is true love and respect. There is no true friendship unless you wield it between the souls that cling together, which is charity poured forth in their hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit. St. Elizabeth of the Trinity said this about love. When a great suffering or some very little suffering is offered to us, oh, let us think very quickly that this is our hour, the hour when we are going to prove our love for him who has loved us exceedingly. St. Faustina says this, pure love knows that only one thing is needed to please God, to do even the smallest things out of great love, love and always love. St. Ignatius of Loyola, what has he done for me? He has loved me and given me his whole self. What shall I do for him? I shall love him and give myself to him without reserve. St. Maximus of Turin, our Savior's passion raises men and women from the depths, lifts them up from the earth, and sets them in the heights. St. Vincent de Paul, we must love our neighbor as being made in the image of God and as an object of his love. St. Catherine Drexel, if we wish to serve God and love our neighbor well, we must manifest our joy in the service we render to him and them 
Let us open wide our hearts. It is joy which invites us. Press forward and fear nothing. And finally, another one from St. Augustine. What does love look like? It has the hands to help others. It has the feet to hasten to the poor and needy. It has the eyes to see misery and want. It has the ears to hear the sighs and sorrows of men. That is what love looks like. How do we love? Jesus says, if you follow my commandments, you will love me. If you follow my commandments, you will love me. Finally, I'd I'd just like to end with this. Some of the most powerful witnesses of this sacrificial love is the privilege I have as a priest to administer last rites. And I've done that many times, even though I've only been a priest for just about four years. And every, just about every single person I encounter who's on that threshold, that veil between earth and heaven, and about to be called home. And if their conscience, most of what they say is directed towards this in some way, shape, or form. I wish I would have loved more. It's not their 401ks. It's not the power, the honor, the prestige, or wishing they climbed that corporate ladder or got that promotion. As good as those things are, but what's on their mind, what's on their heart, is they want the ones that they love around them. And they want to love more. That's the thing that they wish they would have done in life, to love more, to love more, to love more. I think that says something with such great power and witness. So let that ring in your heart and in your mind. That maybe on that threshold someday that God is calling you home. Ask him to give you the strength to love, to love more, to love like a saint. Let us embrace the power of our baptism. Let's embrace the power of the Eucharist that we too can be just like the apostles and the saints to go and bring that love to so many people who need it and desire it. Let us ask him for that strength to be saints of love. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you all so much for tuning in to another episode of The Manly Catholic. If you have not already done so, please hit that subscribe button wherever you get your podcast to make sure you don't miss a single episode. It will also help grow the show and reach as many men as possible. We truly think this podcast can change families and help men to change the world. Thank you again so much for tuning in, and God bless you.